Srila Prabhupada brought a spiritual revolution to the Western world by having disciples chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, in the streets of the world's most famous cities. It was quite a sensation to have Western people in Indian clothes chanting their holy names with shaved heads. It really caught the attention of the public in the Western world at that time. And very quickly, devotees all over the world became known as the Hare Krishna movement or simply the Hare Krishnas. That was a, a hallmark of the devotees, the shaven head, of course, the male devotees. But it's become quite common that male devotees nowadays, they uh, don't have a shaved head, which there's room for that. But especially keeping beards has become quite common. I'm going to talk about that, how now we could facetiously refer to Hairy Krishnas, H A R Y, H A I R Y, keeping hairs. Srila Prabhupada didn't like this. It may not be widely known, but it's right there in his books, which Srila Prabhupada gave much or gave the most uh, authority to, most importance to that anyone who wants to join this movement should not have a long hair, mustache, and beard. Srila Prabhupada, in his purport to Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 20, text 70, this uh, verse is discussing how Sanatan Goswami had long hair and a beard. And Srila Prabhupada writes that the words Bhadra Karaya are significant in this verse. Due to his long hair, mustache, and beard, Sanatan Goswami looked like a Dharavesh or hippie. Since Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not like Sanatan Goswami's hippie features, he immediately asked Chandrasekhar to get him shaved clean. If anyone with long hair or a beard, wants to join this Krishna consciousness movement and live with us. He must similarly shave himself clean. The followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu consider long hair objectionable. So here Srila Prabhupada writes about if one wants to join this movement and live with us, he must shave himself clean. So that is a condition for those who want to join this movement, particularly those who want to live with us. Uh, so you may say, well, if I'm not living in the ashram, if I, if I am an independent householder, it's all right to have a beard. But Srila Prabhupada states here, the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu consider long hair objectionable. We can see that Srila Prabhupada equates that with hippie features. Overall, he didn't like it. It's right there in his books. So if we know this and we still keep long hair or a beard, even if we're a grihasta, then it's, it's tantamount to saying that I know Srila Prabhupada doesn't like this, but still I'm doing it. In other words, I don't care what Srila Prabhupada says in this regard. I'll do, I'll chant my rounds and I'll chant Hare Krishna, but I, this, this I don't care about. That is not a good attitude. In his purport to Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 5, Text 14, Srila Prabhupada wrote, in our Krishna consciousness movement, fashionable persons are taught to adopt one fashion, the dress of a Vaishnava, 
with a shaved head and tilak. They are taught to be always clean in mind, dress, and eating in order to be fixed in Krishna consciousness. What is the use of changing one's dress, sometimes wearing long hair and a long beard, and sometimes dressing otherwise? This is not good. One should not waste his time in such frivolous activities. One should always be fixed in Krishna consciousness and take the cure of devotional service with firm determination. So one may say, well, I, I don't have long hair and a long beard. I only have a small beard. But it's clear that Srila Prabhupada didn't like these things. In the early days, of course, Srila Prabhupada was very liberal. When Umapati Das was initiated in New York in 1966, he recounts, he tells us that he had very long hair and a beard and was wearing just some t-shirt and some shorts he'd made from an old pair of Levi jeans just by cutting off the jeans, New York style at the time. In San Francisco also, Srila Prabhupada, uh, he initiated people, he didn't tell them to shave their head. They'd have long hair and beards. He did speak about it though. He started to talk about it. The thing is that in the beginning, Srila Prabhupada, he didn't have many standards, but gradually he tried to introduce, and he did make various standards. Srila Prabhupada spoke about this in New York in 1966, November the 21st. He didn't, he wasn't telling anyone that you have to shave off your, your hair, but he indicated that this is the proper standard. Srila Prabhupada said in this talk, according to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sampradaya, they keep themselves clean-shaven. Only a single instance is there, Advaita Prabhu had a beard, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never asked him to cleanse. You can see Srila Prabhupada equates uh, shaving with keeping clean. And Srila Prabhupada continues, because one reason is that Advaita Prabhu was contemporary to his Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's father, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not like to dictate to him, but otherwise all his disciples were clean shaved. So Srila Prabhupada is indicating, and then when a disciple who did have a beard gave it up, shaved, uh, Srila Prabhupada was pleased. He wrote to Hayagriva in 1967. Hayagriva, when he joined, like most of the devotees who did join at that time, they had hippie beards. Prabhupada wrote to him, I am so glad to learn that you have sacrificed your long beard. Srila Prabhupada would jokingly refer to Gargamuni's Shakespearean locks because Gargamuni had long hair and Srila Prabhupada thought it looked something like William Shakespeare. So Srila Prabhupada used to joke about it. It's called ribbing someone. If you make a joke that you, you do it in a light-hearted way, but you're pointing out something which isn't very good. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada was pleased when Kirtanananda shaved his head. Uh, but then he wasn't pleased when Kirtanananda again started keeping hairs. He, Srila Prabhupada wrote in a letter to Brahmananda Prabhu. In 1967, Srila Prabhupada wrote to him that Kirtanananda is the first man in our society who cleanly shaved and kept the shika on the top of the head, which Srila Prabhupada liked that. And now he has begun to keep a beard again. This is not good. Whatever he is doing nowadays has no sanction from me. So you may say, well, what's wrong with a beard? Srila Prabhupada explained that the beard is for attracting women. We have in the Bhagavatam, Lavanya Kesha Dharanam. In the Bhagavatam, it's described one of the symptoms of Kali Yuga is that one will try to be very beautiful by keeping hair. And Srila Prabhupada said that he couldn't, he couldn't understand what this meant until he came to the West. 
and saw the hippies having long hair and the women also long flowing, untied hair and all different hairstyles. It's for attracting the opposite sex. Srila Prabhupada explained this in a morning walk about the beards. This was on June the 23rd, 1975 in Los Angeles, Srila Prabhupada explained. Sometimes, Srila Prabhupada said, sometimes the women like a big, big beard. Yes, they like, and they keep. The Mohammedans say, we keep a beard, the women like it. On a morning walk in Vrindavan, Srila Prabhupada explained the benefit of not keeping a beard. Srila Prabhupada uh, saw on the walk, there were many peacocks with their beautiful feathers, and the females, are the peahens, they're quite plain compared to the peacocks. Then Gurudas Prabhu said, among the birds, the males are more beautiful than the females. And Srila Prabhupada replied, among the humans, the women are. And among the Mohammedans, a man with a big beard and moustache is considered very beautiful. Then Gurudas Prabhu said, then we are the least beautiful, we have no hairs. And Prabhupada smilingly said, yes, nobody likes us. We are neither male or female, no one knows who we are. It is very good. If you are attracted to neither male nor female, you are liberated. So we can see that uh, Srila Prabhupada liked his disciples to be not hairy, but hairless. For men, that means regularly shaving the face and the head and keeping a shika on top. And for women, uh, as in Vedic culture, uh, the hair is kept long, but it's tied and tied at the back with a, with a what's that called, a braid, not simply a single tie with all the hair behind fluffing out. And uh, at least Srila Prabhupada kept the dis standard for his disciples that the, the, the hair is covered. At least that's what I saw, that was the standard. In 1976, Srila Prabhupada was preaching against long hair and beards when he visited Auckland. <clears throat> this is from Hari Shari Prabhu's uh, diary. Auckland, New Zealand, at that time, that was uh, quite common. There was a subsect, the Siddha Swarup people, the Haribol people. They were called the Haribol people because they used to chant Haribol a lot. You know, Srila Prabhupada liked chanting Hare Krishna a lot. And they, they would have, many of them would have long hair and beards. And Srila Prabhupada, he spoke on this uh, story of Sanatan Goswami and how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, told Sanatan Goswami who had long hair and a beard to get shaved, Srila Prabhupada pointed out that the first thing when Sanatan Goswami approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Varanasi, the first thing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him was to get his beard and hair shaved off and Srila Prabhupada said, this is one of the items of our movement. If one wants to be initiated, he must be clean shaven. So Srila Prabhupada made that point, saying that many devotees who were enthusiastic to chant Hare Krishna, but they had long hair and beards. Prabhupada made a point, he pointed that out uh, in the lecture that he gave. In Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita, we see there was a boy called Steve and Prabhupada asked him to shave his long hair and beard. You see, in the beginning, Srila Prabhupada didn't say anything, but later he made a point and Steve protested. He said, why do you want me to shave my head? Krishna had long hair, Rama had long hair, Lord Chaitanya had long hair and Christ had long hair. Why should I shave my beard? Srila Prabhupada smiled and replied, because you are now following me. 
There was a print on the wall of Suradas, a Vaishnava, uh, an ancient, uh, famous Vaishnava from India. Prabhupada pointed to that picture and said, you should shave your head like that. Steve said, I don't think I'm ready to do that yet. And Prabhupada said, all right, you are still a young man. There is still time, but at least you should shave your face clean and cut your hair like a man. On the morning of the initiation, Steve shaved off his beard and cut his hair around the ears so that it was short in front but long in the back. How's this, he asked. You should cut the back also, Prabhupada replied. Steve agreed. Again, there was a disciple uh, from the San Francisco group uh, who Srila Prabhupada, ref no, not Srila Prabhupada, Satsrup Das Goswami in his writings referred to Ramanudra as one of the looser San Francisco devotees. What happened, he, this Ramanuja, he was initiated, he came right from Haight-Ashbury, the hippie area, he was initiated. He came and joined Srila Prabhupada in India. This was at the time when there were just two or three devotees in India with Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I, just two, it was Achutananda and Ramanuja, and there wasn't anyone else. Uh, and he, Ramanuja joined Srila Prabhupada in India with a full full black beard, and Prabhupada didn't like it. He would cautiously and indirectly mention it, but the beard stayed. Ramanuja didn't seem very fixed in Krishna consciousness. He was carrying around a book with him about Tibetan Buddhism, and then again in the Prabhupada Lamrita, uh, this is mentioned in another section, that Ramanuja, Ramanuja's beard was huge. This is Ramanuja, that is supposed to be a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, looking like an ordinary hippie, he misrepresented Srila Prabhupada. Where, wherever they went, Prabhupada told Achutananda, tell your friend to shave. Achutananda and Ramanuja talked, but Ramanuja wouldn't shave. Srila Prabhupada wanted Ramanuja to agree on his own, so he didn't push him. More, but when a copy arrived of the latest Back to Godhead magazine from America, Prabhupada got an idea. Two illustrations in the magazine showed the pastime of Haridash Thakur converting a prostitute. After her conversion, the prostitute had shaved her head. So Srila Prabhupada showed the pictures to Ramanuja. Before she became a devotee with long hair, and afterward with a shaved head. So Prabhupada showed the pictures to Ramanuja and said, what is the difference between this picture and that picture? I don't know, Swamiji, Ramanuja replied. And Prabhupada pointed to the pictures. No, no, what's the difference? Oh, she's a devotee. Yes, but what else? Oh, she has a shaved head. Yes, Prabhupada said. A devotee has a shaved head. Do you want me to shave my head? Yes, he specifically, Srila Prabhupada specifically wanted the, that Ramanuja shave. He specifically didn't want him to have a long hair and a beard. But within a few days, Ramanuja began growing his beard and hair back. And then Prabhupada said, from now on, no more cheap initiations. They have to know something. Similarly, one of the very first batch of devotees in New York, Mukunda, now Mukunda Goswami. Srila Prabhupada at first tolerated his beard, but then he later helped Mukunda Prabhu at the time to please his spiritual master, helped him to understand that to please his spiritual master, he should shave off his beard. Uh, when Prabhupada first arrived in 1967, Mukunda had a a very big beard, a very full beard. But it wasn't very long and Mukunda kept it trimmed. So it was a full facial beard, but not very long. He kept it trimmed. 
Shortly after Srila Prabhupada arrived, Prabhupada said to him, you look just like a sage. And Mukunda th took that as a compliment and he thought, oh, so good, I don't have to shave my beard or my hair. However, as more and more disciples shaved their heads, it wasn't that everyone in San Francisco kept long hair. More and more disciples shaved their heads and then Mukunda felt unsure of himself. So one day he asked Srila Prabhupada, do you like this? And he, he gestured to his beard. Prabhupada stroked his own clean face and said, I like this. See, Srila Prabhupada was very expert at putting things in such a way that people got the point without poking them. Sometimes Srila Prabhupada poked also. So Mukunda understood and he shaved it off the next day. And uh, it used to be I'm not sure now, I haven't seen Mukunda Maharaj for many years, but I, I used to see that he would shave his head every day. He kept that standard. <clears throat> what about mustaches for initiated disciples? In one exchange, there were some initiated disciples who came to Srila, see Srila Prabhupada, and they had they'd grown their hair out quite a bit, and they had a moustache. And Srila Prabhupada was quite strong with them about this. <clears throat> and he said to them that, I'll repeat that anyone keeping long hairs, he is no more my disciple. This is the first condition. And the devotee asked, well, is that for brahmacharis or householders also? We've seen the picture of you when you were a householder doing business. You didn't have a shaved head. You didn't have a mustache. So is this shaving and no mustache, is that only for brahmacharis or for householders? Are they obliged like that also? Srila Prabhupada said that at the time when I had the hair and mustache, I was not initiated. Since I've become initiated, I have shaven regularly. That's the answer, Srila Prabhupada said. So Srila Prabhupada clearly wants that his disciples and followers be clean shaven. In one letter he wrote uh, to uh, devotees in India, Regarding keeping the Mohammedans, the Muslims, in our temple, I have no objection, provided they follow the rules and regulations. Our philosophy is that we are not this body. Some may say, well, what does it matter if you have hairs and everything? It's because we're not the body. But Srila Prabhupada said, our philosophy is that we are not this body, out, outer tabernacle, <coughs> But one must stick to our principles and live with us like other devotees. The difficulty will be that the, the Mohammedans will not agree to shave their heads and beards. Our principle is that anyone can live with us provided he becomes clean shaved, dresses like, like us, follows the regulated principles and chants the beads regularly. So that's again specifically for those who are living with us, although for initiated devotees, um, Srila Prabhupada didn't want beards, moustache, long hair, all these things. Again, for men, uh, women are supposed to keep long hair. What about the prostitute who shaved? That's not uh, the general standard for women unless they're widows. It's very good if widows keep a shaved head without a shika. Uh, that, that is the, used to be the standard in India. Nowadays they keep bangles and, uh, and colorful saris, which is actually not proper, but that's not the subject we're discussing now. Uh, Chattamasya beard, yes. Um, Vaishnava Acharyas used to keep beards during Chaturmasya, there's a well-known picture of Srila Bhaktisthan Saraswati, another well-known picture of Bhaktivinoda Thakur with beards 
while they were practicing Chaturmasya. Srila Prabhupada explained about this in a letter. He said that, uh, yeah, when the Acharyas are seen with a beard, that's when they were observing Chaturmasya. But then Srila Prabhupada explained that proper observance of Chaturmasya is not simply keeping a beard. There are many rules and regulations. You can't eat a variety of foods. Only kitchari is prepared and put on the floor, and then you have to lick it up from the floor. There are many rules also. And Srila Prabhupada says, not always that they kept a beard, only during Chaturmasya. So if you want to grow a beard in, during Chaturmasya, you should also, Srila Prabhupada, according to this letter from Srila Prabhupada, one's expected to take prasad once a day, taking kitri only from the floor. That means you have to lick it up, go grass. You can't pick it up with your hand. Srila Prabhupada uh, explained that, yes, you can keep a beard during the Chaturmasya if you follow all these things, but not at other times. And even when two sannyasis uh, had grown beards during Chaturmasya, what, what, were, what was happening, there was the deity installation was about to take place at Iskon Hyderabad, and two of Srila Prabhupada's sannyasis were growing out their hair and beards. But Srila Prabhupada said, it was inappropriate that they looked dirty and unclean on such an important occasion. And they both immediately went and shaved their heads and faces. There's another instance where in Vrindavan, Srila Prabhupada, he saw quite a few devotees. They had long hair and beards, and Srila Prabhupada called this the hippie seeds, this is your hippie seeds. You like to have long hair and beards because you're like hippies. So devotees, they went and shaved immediately, even though it was a Kadashi. So devotees, uh, they may not know these things, but they should know. Uh, otherwise, uh, what's happening is that new people coming they see older, respected devotees with beards and they think, well, that's the standard. They may think it's not only acceptable to have a beard, but it's preferred, that's better. Of course, to have a few days growth is not a big problem uh, unless one is going out for preaching programs. I myself, especially if I'm at a farm, or I'm not going out for preaching. Many times I'm sitting and writing. Few days, but a full beard is a problem. And for grihasta devotees, males working in a job, short, neat hair, it's okay. <laughs> uh, Srila Prabhupada asked once in Detroit, he was initiating some devotees, he asked why they had the hair on their head and Shri there was explained they're working in jobs and Shri Prabhupada said, okay, but he said, he also said that uh, nowadays it's, you can keep a shaved head and it's become quite normal and that's, it, it was in the 1960s and the 1970s, it was a bit unusual to have a shaved head. It would, but nowadays, um, it, it's very common, and it's not considered unusual at all. And many, what we might call respectable people of the secular world, they keep a, a shaved head. Men keep a shaved head. Of course, uh, Shastra says that shika is also required. So this Buddhist shaving their head with, with no shika, nothing, uh, that's not so desirable. I'm saying grihastas could also <coughs> have a shaved head, but if they have a little short hair, uh, just to, as they're in the secular world, Srila Prabhupada didn't make a big issue of that, but still best if they keep a shika. Much more can be said about this, but I just 
want to make the point that uh, keeping a full beard, if you know that Srila Prabhupada doesn't like it, it's almost like a statement that, well, I, I know Srila Prabhupada doesn't like it, but I don't care what Srila Prabhupada thinks. That's not spiritually healthy. Hare Krishna, not Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalpa tarubhya shakripa sindhubhya evacha patita anam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha.